So I wanted to make a guide specific to barriers and the many situations on how to use them to get the most impact on a match. It's alright if you know some or all of these cause then you're already a good Zarya. My goal here is to get anyone who doesn't already know to have a simple and clear guide to help them to also become a great Zarya player. Let's get right into it. The first thing I want you to do is to change how you think about barriers. Don't think of them as a way to get charge, but instead as a way to save your teammate's life from a potential one-hit kill. Now, that doesn't mean hold on to your barriers until something happens, it just means to pick carefully and try to pay attention to the cooldowns of key enemy abilities. Remember, she's a tank first and a DPS second. So use your barriers as such to protect your team and not just to get a little charge. With that said, let's first start with ways to use your barriers defensively. The infamous Roadhog Hook. This is where probably most Zarya's first start to learn what her barriers can really do when it comes to saving a life. The fact that Roadhog's Hook is almost always a guaranteed kill means that Mercy or Lucio that would have gotten picked off first from your team instead will live and give you massive charge to help take out the Roadhog for that fight. Reinhardt's Charge. This and Roadhog's Hook are the two most common uses good Zarya's use their barriers for. A Reinhardt charge can either reward his whole team if done right, or be a complete waste and now his team is entirely exposed because he left them. Putting that key barrier on your teammate ensuring their survival is another great way to save someone and get massive charge. What I've been doing lately is actually throwing myself in the way of a Rhine charge if I think it won't go that far, and simply barrier myself before he hits me just to ensure no one else on my team gets hit by it and I can use my projected barrier on them for something else. Tracer's Pulse Bomb By now many players know using your barriers on yourself and a teammate during a big ultimate like D.Va's Self Destruct, Reaper's Death Blossom, Pharah's Barrage, etc. can give you massive charge and keep a key teammate who may not find cover in time alive. But not many use it for when Tracer sticks someone. Because Tracer gets her Pulse Bomb so fast, timing your barriers for when you know she has her ult and may use it in a moment is a great way to get a good charge. Even a big target like Reinhardt, who's easy to hit with the barrier, almost never gets protected at lower ranks from the Zarya when Tracer sticks him. Learning to start nullifying her pulse bomb in this way can ensure Tracer isn't contributing to her team as much as she could. Anyone who is low on health. This isn't really against a one hit kill ability, but if someone is low, then you can be sure that at least a few members of the enemy team are going to try to finish them off. This will give them those few crucial seconds to get the heals they need to stay in the fight before being taken out. Countering Ana, Zarya's barriers can be used to protect a sleeping teammate or someone who is hit by the anti-heal. Anyone trying to take advantage of a sleeping teammate, such as a Reinhardt charge or Roadhog hook, should be getting a barrier from you at any moment so pay extra attention when they go down to see what the enemy might do to capitalize on them sleeping. As for the anti-heal, if say your Reinhardt was hit, then it doesn't necessarily mean you should use it on him, but if the previous tip applies and Reinhardt is low on health and needs those heals fast before he goes down, then use your barrier to remove the anti-heal debuff. Now that's it for tips on using them defensively, now we're going to talk about using them offensively any teammate using an ultimate. There are still many Zarya's that don't use barriers to help teammates pull off ultimates at lower ranks, so that's why I'm putting this here first. Using a barrier for your Reaper during his Death Blossom, Genji using his Dragon Blade, Pharah during Barrage are all great examples. Help your DPS pull off their team wiping ultimates and I guarantee you'll get a really good charge from the enemy trying to take them out. Helping the other tank push. There are many things to stop your Reinhardt from completing his charge. On a Sleep Dart, McCree Flashbang, Junkrat Trap, and even Sombra's Hack if it's fast enough. Try to coordinate or at least pay attention for when your Reinhardt charges in and give him that barrier. Same goes for Winston when he leaps in. When he jumps on the enemy healer, there's a good chance they will be protected and instantly start attacking your Winston. This is a great way to give him more time to take them out and your team to try and follow up. The same for Roadhog and his hook. If you want to make sure nothing interrupts him getting that kill, then barrier him as soon as you see him hook someone. So again, use barriers to help the other tank on your team make their push. 
helping a DPS pull off an ability. Some great heroes you can also consider when trying to barrier are DPS whose ability takes time and they need help pulling it off, such as Mei trying to free someone or Sombra needing to get a key hack on an enemy. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll get a ton of charge from it compared to the other tips I've listed, but it helps your DPS do their job easier and that's part of what a tank is supposed to do. Lastly, I'd like to list things that you don't have to use barriers for, namely almost any primary fire in the game. A lot of Zaryas who just want to get charged will use most of their barriers just because there's fire going back and forth. Now I'm not saying to never use them for that, but it's just not as impactful. And if you know it's safe to do because you know there are no ultimates or abilities you have to worry about, then go for it. But in general, you don't want to use barriers just because teams are shooting at each other. If the tip about a teammate who is low on health applies, then yeah, go for that. Easily avoidable ultimates. Not all diva bombs land in the key spot and your team can easily hide from it. But if you decide to walk in front of it anyway because you want to get that sweet charge, it's not the worst thing to do by far, but again, just consider your options before doing that. Same with Hanzo's strike. I mean, who really gets hit by that if it's not coupled with another ultimate? But if I had a nickel for every time Azaria walked into a dragon strike willingly, again, I'm not saying to never do that, but choose carefully because Zarya is a tank first and a DPS second. So don't get too hung up on getting your charge and think more about keeping your teammates alive and you'll be surprised at how much charge you end up having because you're thinking more about your team than yourself. Bonus tip. Zarya's barrier can be used to protect your teammates from an ultimate by standing in front of it. The same goes if you shield the teammate and stand behind them protecting you from the ultimate. Reinhardt and D.Va are good examples. Instead of just shielding yourself and one other teammate, you have the potential to protect the entire team by using your barrier right next to the ultimate zoning out its area of effect. This does take some getting used to, but it's really helpful. A special shout out to October Mona and Big Red, two subscribers who helped me get these clips together. So that's it for the video guys, tell me what you think. Did I miss something? Should I have added something? Or did you learn anything from this? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.